Phew, I'm tired. I guess that's enough for today. My name is Asami Satu. I'm a freelance scriptwriter, and I'm 25 years old. I work from home, so I spend most of my time indoors writing. Oh, great. I completely lost track of time. Yuji is going to be home soon, and I've got to make dinner. My husband Yuji is one year older than I am and is currently working as the president of an apparel company. We got married three years ago, and we were a happy couple for a while. But now, our relationship has frozen over, and we don't get along too well. I'm home! Welcome back. I'm sorry, dinner's not ready yet. It's fine. I've already eaten. Went out to a restaurant. Oh, I wish you'd tell me in advance. I was about to make your portion, too. You haven't made anything yet, so what's the big deal? Now you can just make your own dinner. Yeah, but if you had come home a little later, I would have already had dinner on the table. It would have gone to waste. Can you get off my back already? Just forget about it. Hmm. That moment, the doorbell rang and broke through the tense silence that had built up between us. I wonder who that is. I took a look at the security camera monitor and saw a man and a woman who looked to be in their 50s standing outside our door. They seemed to be a couple. Hi, how can I help you? I'm sorry to bother you. We just moved in next door and we just wanted to say hello to the neighbors. Do you have a moment? Oh yeah. I remember seeing some movers bringing in boxes to the apartment next to us. Yes, of course. I'll be right there. I didn't see him on the monitor, but they've got a little boy with them. Good evening. I'm sorry to bother you during dinner time. No problem. My name is Tanabe. We moved into the apartment next door to you. My name is Sato. Thank you for coming to say hi when you're so busy. No, it's only polite that we introduce ourselves to the people next door to us. The truth is, it's actually our daughter Reika and our grandson Koga that have moved in. But my daughter's, uh, gone out for some business, so we've come in her place. Oh, is that so? Go on, Koga. Say hello to Miss Sato. G good evening. I'll make sure that my daughter comes to say hello when she can. I hope that you'll be able to get along with her and Koga. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I accepted the sweets they had brought as a present and closed the door. Look at these cookies. They look delicious. Cookies? I wish they would have brought something savory instead. I don't like sweet stuff. You shouldn't complain about the presents that people have brought. It was nice of them to even give us anything. So what if I complain? They're not here right now, and I'm not going to go around shouting it from the rooftops. Yeah, well, our new next-door neighbors are a lady called Rika and her son Koga. They didn't mention the dad's name, so she might be a single mother. Oh, yeah? Hmm. That's all Eugene and I said to each other that evening. If the neighbors hadn't come to visit and given us something to talk about, then we probably wouldn't have talked to each other at all. Ugh, it's been three years since we got married. I guess this is what it means to be in a stale relationship. It feels pretty lonely to not be able to talk and laugh with him like we used to. The next day, after finishing my quota for the day, I went to the supermarket in order to buy ingredients for that evening's dinner and dessert. I was about to enter the apartment lobby when I bumped into a woman who was holding Koja by the hand. On first look, I could tell that this was probably his mother, Rika. Hello, Miss Sato. Good evening, Koga. Who are you? It's nice to meet you. My name is Sato. I'm living in the apartment next door to you. Oh, yeah. I heard about you from my daddy. Nice to meet you. I'm Rika. Yeah. Rika was pretty tall, and because of the way she wore clothes to accentuate her assets, I could see that she had the body of a model. Not only that, she was a beautiful woman. What are you looking at? Oh, uh, I just... You're a really beautiful woman. And I ended up staring. Sorry. Oh, really? Thanks. I get that a lot. She's pretty, but she might have a problem with her personality. I was a little irritated by her response, but I could imagine why she was so confident. If she was that beautiful, then she could probably get away with a lot of things, with just a bat of her eyelashes. It was a moment that made me realize that the world really was unequal after all, and I felt it painfully. Asami, what are you doing out here? Hurry up and go inside already! Oh, Yuji, welcome home. I just bumped into our new neighbor and wanted to introduce myself. What, the one you were talking about yesterday? Oh, hi. It's lovely to meet you. I just moved into the apartment next door to yours yesterday. My name is Reika Tanabe. Yeah, hi. Wow, she's really pretty. It's nice to meet you, too. My name is Yuji Sato. Oh, my God. Why didn't you say that your husband was this handsome? You look like you could be a model. <laughs> Thanks. It's a great compliment to hear that from someone as beautiful as you, Miss Tanabe. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed. Huh? Her attitude is completely different to when she was talking to me. Did she start acting nice because Yuji's good looking? I'm his wife, so you might think that I'm biased, but Yuji really is as handsome as Rika says he is. He's tall, lean, and actually does model for this clothing company produces. You could say he's a full-time company president and part-time model. If I were to put it in a negative way, he's a narcissist. Oh yeah, Asami, you still haven't made dinner if you've just come back from shopping, right? Yeah, why? Then why don't we invite Reika over to have dinner? She's a single mother, so it must be tough having to do everything by herself. Really? You do that? 
Thank you so much. I'd love to eat at your place. What? But I've only bought enough for the both of us. Then you can go back to the supermarket and buy some more. It's not that far. Well, yeah, but Yuji was right. The supermarket I usually go to is just a short walk away. And it wouldn't be that much trouble to go back. But it annoyed me that Yuji was trying to act like the good guy in front of such a beautiful woman like Rika. He wouldn't take his eyes off her, even though I was right next to him. Go on, hurry up and go shopping. Fine. But I didn't want to do something childish, like start a fight while we were still outside. And in front of our neighbors, no less. It would be better in the long term to get to know the people living next door to us too. I swallowed back the words that I wanted to spit out at Yuji and turned around to head back to the supermarket. Go on, Kuga. You go with a nice lady and get what you want. What? Me and Kuga were just on our way to the supermarket when he stopped you. If you're going back, then could you take him with you? Why don't you both come with me? We can all go together. Come on, don't make her go all the way to the supermarket. She needs a rest every now and then. She's already been working hard to take care of her son day and night. She deserves some time to herself. What do you think, Reika? I think that you're a really thoughtful man. Meiji, I'm so so jealous. It's ridiculous enough that Yuji's being overly sweet to Rika, just because she's so pretty. But I can't believe that Rika would actually accept that offer. She only just met me a few minutes ago, and she's already trying to leave her kid with me? What's wrong with her? Miss Sato, let's go shopping. I'll help you. I yeah, sure. Thanks, Koga. Then let's get going. Yeah. Koga smiled up at me with a big grin on his face, and my heart just melted at what an angel he was. We left Yuji and Rika and headed to the supermarket. Do you come to the supermarket with your mom a lot? No, I always come with my grandma. I help her with the shopping. Oh, really? Is your mom too busy with work to come with you? What's work? Is that fun? Uh, it's... Mommy's always sleeping at home. She doesn't get up until late. Oh, is that so? It was Kuga and his grandparents who came to introduce themselves last night. And she didn't look like she's ill. She's probably not that interested in raising her own son. I don't know anything about her, and I don't intend on being friends with her, but the way she was flirting with Yuji really pisses me off. I bought the extra ingredients and bought Koga some chocolate as a treat for helping me, before we headed out of the supermarket and walked back home. We're back! Already? That was fast. I didn't have to buy a lot, just more of the same ingredients I bought earlier. Yeah, whatever. Hmm, can he at least thank me? I went back for her sake. Mommy! Miss Sato bought me chocolate! Look! Good for you. Thanks so much, Yuji. You're so kind. It's the least we can do. Yuji acted as though he was the one that had gone and done the shopping, and as though I had used the money he had earned to pay for the groceries. Excuse me? I paid for everything out of my own pocket, including the chocolate. I didn't use any of his money. I stood at the kitchen stove and began cooking as anger bubbled up inside me. Here you go. Dinner's ready. You made meat stew? If you don't like it, then don't eat it. I'm not forcing you. What? Don't say that. You're so scary, Asami. Right? Can't you take a leaf out of Reika's book and be a little less intimidating, Asami? I'm sorry about that. I was born with this face. You know what? I've never made meat stew before. I've always thought that it's for old people. You only ever see grandmas making stew and stuff. <laughs> That's so true. What? I went to all this trouble to make her dinner, and she's calling me a grandma? What the hell is up with her manners? And why is Yuji laughing with her? He's supposed to be my husband. Back me up. But despite complaining about the food, Rika didn't leave anything behind. She even had the nerve to ask for seconds and ate all of that too. As for Kuga, I made sure to stew his portion for a little longer so that the potatoes and the meat would soften up and cut everything into smaller sizes so that it would be easier for him to eat. This is really yummy. It's better than what mommy makes. Really? I'm so happy to hear that. He's pretty good at flattering people for a two-year-old. I'm pretty sure he's just being honest. Fine. Then I'm not cooking for you anymore. You can ask Asami for dinner from now on. I'm sorry. R Rika, you don't have to be like that. I'm sure he was just being polite. Whatever, I'm leaving. I'll see you again, Yuji. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's no problem. Don't hesitate to come over. I'd be happy to help you. Thank you so much. You're such a sweetheart. Hmm. After Rika and Kuga left, I sat down with Yuji to ask him for some advice. Hey, I don't think that Rika and I are going to get along that well. I think that she's a little obnoxious. She obviously doesn't like me too. <sighs> You're too sensitive, Asami. What's the problem with inviting her to dinner every now and then? It's not like it costs a lot to give away two portions of meat stew. It's not about the money. It's about her attitude. She's really rude. She's a single mother. Give her a break. What's the problem with giving her a hand every now and then? It's not like we're too busy to help her. I get that she must be having a hard time being a single mother, but I'm just as busy with work and taking care of the housework. Don't I deserve a break too? Yeah, yeah, whatever. I didn't know that you could be so cold. You're really selfish, you know? It's just one dinner. Big deal. Cold? Me? You're the last person I... I realized it was no point. No matter how much I tried to explain how I felt to Yuji, he wouldn't understand. He didn't even care. The moment I realized I was wasting my time, 
I sighed, stood up, and left the room to go and do the dishes. The evening went by without us talking, and we both went to bed without even saying goodnight to each other. The next day, all right, I want to complete around 20 pages of the draft today, and then look through... I wonder who it is. Ugh, it's Rika. What do I do? I thought about pretending that I wasn't at home, but I thought that it would be worse if she complained to Yuji later on. The last thing I wanted was for Yuji to side with Rika, so I unwillingly answered the door. Yes? Can you open the door for a second? What for? I'm a little busy. Just open the door already. Koga's with me. I just want to talk to you for a moment. Hmm. I opened the door a few inches, only for Rika to push it wide open and march in with Kuga by her side. Hey, what are you doing? Kuga said that he wanted to come and play, so I brought him here. You work from home, don't you? You can spend some time with him. How do you know that? Yuji told me yesterday while you were out shopping. And? How can I help you? If you're at home, I was thinking that you can watch over Kuga for me. What? I'm working. I can't babysit for you. You say that it's work, but it's not like you make a lot of money from it, right? You're lucky that Yuji runs his own company. You don't have to work as hard if he earns so much. Ugh. Anyway, take care of Kuga for me, will you? Where are you going? Just take him with you. I've got a few things I need to take care of. I don't have the time to watch him. Then what about your parents? Can't you ask them to babysit for you? I came here because they're busy too. I'm not stupid. Can't you take a hint? You're the only person I can ask. Excuse me? I want to watch TV. Can I? It's time for Mr. Action Man. Sorry, Kuga, but I'm a little busy with work. I don't have the time to watch you, so... It's not that big a deal. You can keep on working while Kuga watches TV. He won't bother you. Anyway, I've got to go. I'll be back in one hour to pick him up. Have fun. Wait, Rika? Hey, come on. I want to watch TV. Yeah, I'll be right there. Rika. Kuga tugged on my arm and led me towards the living room, and I couldn't stop Rika from leaving the apartment. I knew that he didn't mean anything bad by it, so I couldn't blame him for his mother's actions and followed his lead. Oh, well, it's just going to be an hour. I can get back to work after that. But I was too naive. By the time Rika came back, a few hours had already passed, and it was already evening. And she returned with my husband, who she said she bumped into at the lobby. Rika, you said that you would be back in one hour. You've been gone for hours. It's not my fault. There was a lot I had to do, and I remembered a few things while I was out. That's not a good enough reason for you to force your child onto someone else for an entire day. I don't understand how you can leave your son to a stranger. He'd still be with a stranger if I took him to a daycare center. It's the exact same thing. And you won't do anything to him. Chill out, Asami. It just means that she thinks that we're trustworthy. Take it as a compliment. Exactly. That's why I can't leave Koga to you, Asami, because I trust you. Don't get so irritated about letting Koga stay for a couple of hours. What are you going to do if he wakes up and hears us all arguing? In the end, I spent the entire day playing with Kuga and couldn't get back to my work because he didn't want to be left alone. He finally fell asleep an hour ago, but I had to start preparing for dinner. I'm saying all of this for Kuga's sake. If you think that it's for his sake, then you should agree that it was best for him to stay at home rather than follow me around all day. He would have been really tired and I wouldn't have been able to let him play. That's not the problem. I mean that, well, whatever. I'll leave with Kuga after we've had dinner. What? I heard that Kuga had been at ours today and told her that they could eat dinner with us again. There's no point chasing them out if it's already time for dinner. Then go ahead and eat. I'm going out to eat with a friend. What? Who's going to make dinner for us? I don't know, and I don't care. Why don't you get something delivered? I became sick of both of their attitudes and stormed out of the house. I wondered why you called me to have drinks so suddenly. But is that it? Don't you think that's a little mean? Am I being petty? I was so annoyed by Yuji that I called my friend Fushiko and asked her to join me for a drink at the closest bar. Fushiko's a web designer, and we became friends through a certain job we did together a few years ago. We've become close enough that we talk to each other about everything. It's pretty simple. Your husband's a douchebag. Your neighbor's a piece of crap, too. I completely agree with you, but do you really have to say it like that? You don't really love him anymore, do you? Why stay with him? Well, we've been having a lot of stupid fights recently, and I get pissed off with him just existing. But I thought that that was normal for any couple. I thought that it was just a phase. I guess some couples might go through a period like that. But usually they'd work through it together. I don't think a normal husband would act the way your husband is now. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's only been two days since she moved in. We still don't know if he's actually cheating on you. Yeah, I guess. But just imagining that this could go on for much longer makes me feel sick. I can't take it. Don't think about it now. You can deal with that when it happens. Go on, take a drink. What is it? It smells really bad. I ordered a cocktail that would make you feel better. Drink up. Wait, wait. Tell me what's inside first. Sardines, turtle, energy drinks, eggs, and... 
Oh yeah, there's... Do you really expect me to drink that? No way. Is that really a drink that the bar made? Can they have that on the menu? This bar makes any drink you want. If you tell them what you want to put in it. Oh, hey, why don't we get them to make a drink that will punish your husband? We can deliver him to death's door. Stop it. You're freaking me out. Bushiko listened to me complain until dawn, and I barely managed to walk back home because of how tired and drunk I was. I got home well after the sun had risen and entered the apartment to find that, of course, Rika and Kuga were gone, but that Yuji was also gone too. That's really strange. It's still too early for him to leave for work. Where is he? I took a shower and took a seat on the couch in the living room when Yuji finally came in through the front door. Welcome back. Where were you? That's my line. Why didn't you come back until this morning? I messaged to let you know that I was with Fushiku last night. I left the house pretty upset, but after meeting up with Fushiku, I felt a little guilty for leaving so suddenly and messaged Yuji to tell him I was with Fushiku. I felt that it was the least I had to do to make sure he didn't worry about where I was. Either way, he didn't reply to me. Really? With Fushiko? You expect me to just trust the message you sent? What? What about you? You came home later than I did. I, I went to take out the trash. It's not like I went anywhere. It took you 20 minutes to throw out the trash? And you've never helped me with the trash before. Why now? I just dropped by the convenience store after I threw it out. Then where's the stuff you bought? I just bought some chicken and ate it on the way home. Sure. I should probably let you know that today is not our trash collection day. What? I thought that trash was collected every single day. Only on certain days of the week. You don't know anything about the schedule because I'm always throwing the trash out for the both of us. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, well. It doesn't matter. It'll get picked up the next time the trash collectors come, and our house will be clean. What's the problem? Yeah, he's acting way too suspiciously. Oh, I forgot. I've got to head to the office early today. I've got a meeting with a client. I'll see you later. Yeah. See you. I went to the bedroom and rolled into bed. Ugh, it might be just as simple as Fushiku said it would be. I'm probably clinging to the memories I had with Yuji in the past, in the hope that those days will come back, but I don't feel anything for him anymore. I rolled onto my side when something on the pillow poked my cheek. Ow, what is this? An earring? I sat up in bed to look at what had hit my cheek, when I found an earring in the shape of a heart fallen on the pillow. Neither Yuji or I had our ears pierced, and I didn't even use clip-on earrings. Wait a minute, this is the earring that Rika was wearing last night. It's hers. One of Rika's earrings was left in the bed, and Yuji went to throw something out. I thought he had been lying about throwing out the trash, but if it was true, then any adult should understand what he was trying to hide. I had been cheated on. I knew it. They must have slept together last night. I threw the earring into a small plastic bag, and hid it in one of my desk drawers, where Yuji wouldn't go looking for it. I'll think about it after I've had some rest. After the discovery, my feelings for Yuji had completely disappeared, but I wasn't going to just accept reality and go down without a fight. When I woke up, it was already midday, and my drunk haze had already worn off. Oh, <clears throat> I better make lunch. Hmm? It's from Fushiku. I wonder what it is. Heaven or hell? Which do you prefer? Pick one. What kind of question is that? Well, depending on the person, they might actually be the same thing. What might be heaven for me might be hell for you. Then don't ask. <laughs> so, what do you really want to say? Take a look at this photo. Huh? This is... I was walking around town when I came across a douchebag and a piece of crap holding hands, and they slowly evolved into a bag of trash. What does that mean? I'm trying to say that they're scumbags. Yeah. I knew it. I came back home and got into bed when I found one of her earrings on the pillow. I was already convinced that they've slept together. What? You're kidding. But now that I've seen an actual photo of them together, I've finally gotten the resolve to actually do something about it. Thanks, Fushiko. But I'm surprised you managed to get such a clear photo of them. Well, a long time ago, I used to work as a cameraman on the front lines of a mage. Oh, yeah. Okay, I get it, Fushiku. You don't have to explain. Fushiku is a really strange girl. But I think that she's got a charisma that reels you in and keeps you close no matter what weird stuff she gets up into. Thanks to her for showing me the photograph that she had taken of Yuji and Rika together, I suddenly realized how stupid I had been to stay with Yuji all this time. I think I can finally divorce him and move on without any regrets. Alright, now all I have to do is wait for Yuji to come home. Around the time that Yuji was due to come home from work, I had positioned myself outside the front door and waited for when he would appear in the corridor. When he finally turned up, it was with Rika, draped on his arm. Hi, you two. You look pretty close. Linking arms like that? Did something happen? What? Asami? I wonder if you're having an affair. No, of course not. I just twisted my ankle before entering the lobby. So Yuji offered to help me. Seriously? I just helped her walk the corridor. What's wrong with that? Then what about this earring? Hey, that's my earring. I must have dropped it when I went for dinner last night. Thanks for finding it. I found it on the pillow in our bedroom. Care to explain why it was there? Huh? Oh, uh, Kuga fell asleep in your bed yesterday, remember? I just took a nap with him. You really expect me to believe that? Why didn't you just return to your own apartment? I think that's what people would normally do. So what if it's not normal? He was sleeping. We didn't want to wake him up. Is that so? So where were you guys today? What do you mean? I was at work today. 
Then what about this photograph? It looks like you went out together today. Why lie about it? Where did you get that photo? From a little bird. Go on. What's your excuse? It's nothing serious. I just borrowed Yuji for a while, that's all. There was a discount for couples at this cafe that I go to, and I happened to bump into Yuji. I got him to pretend to be my boyfriend so that I could get the discount. That's all. I swear. I'm a single mother, so it was the only way for me to enjoy the discount. You can't be serious. That's way too convenient to be true. That's when the door to the apartment next door opened a crack and Kuga burst out. Mommy! Oh, it's the man that likes sleeping naked. The man that likes sleeping naked? Yeah, Mommy and that man were sleeping naked. I woke up and they were sleeping next to me. What? Uh, Kuga, stop! Kuga, is that true? They were both naked? Yeah, I woke him up and he was naked and his wee-wee was small. <laughs> I bet it was. Did you hear that, Yuji? Huh? Uh Koga, go back to where Grandpa is. Get back inside. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you want to do? You're not going to tell me that you were actually wrestling or something, are you? I, I want a divorce. I've had enough. Sure. Then I hope that you're very happy together. I'll pack my things. What? Did you think that I would beg you not to leave me? That I would end up in tears and ask for you to forgive me? As if. I'd rather die than have to live with you for one more day. That was easier than I expected it would be. We should have just demanded a divorce in the beginning, and we wouldn't have had to hide behind her back. Isn't this great, Yuji? I'm going to demand compensation as well, so keep that in mind. That's not going to be a problem. Yuji's the CEO of his own company. You can ask for whatever you want. You should be more worried about paying the bills next month. You're just a failed scriptwriter that earns less than the minimum wage. It sounds like Yuji hasn't told you anything about his company. He may run his own business. But he's in a lot of debt. What? He's just a CEO in name, too. He doesn't have any employees or anything. He's the only one working at his company. And I'm the one that's paying for all of the bills and groceries right now. What? You're lying. Yuji, tell me she's lying. It's all true. What? You can't be serious. I'm not working. I thought that you could afford everything. What? So you were leeching off of your parents the entire time? Even though you've got a son and you call yourself an adult, you've got to be joking. Oh, wait. I've changed my mind. I don't want Yuji anymore. You can have him back. I'm sorry for sleeping with him, so please, don't make me pay compensation anymore. You must be pretty stupid if you think that's going to work. It doesn't matter whether you end up together or not. What's done is done. You had an affair, so I'm going to demand compensation. That's that. What? You're just after our money. Don't you realize how pathetic that is? You're no different from me. You don't earn a lot with that freelance job of yours. Excuse me? I may not be rich, but I earn enough to take care of myself. I wrote the script for a TV drama that's been broadcast across the country. I just didn't tell you because I thought that it would affect your self-esteem, or that you might rely on me for more money. What? That's not fair! You're a liar! I never lied to you. We just haven't been talking for the past few months, so I never had the chance to tell you. Anyway, that's it. I'll be in touch. What? This has nothing to do with me. I'm not paying anything. I think it's too late. Your father's been watching us for a while now. What? Rika, how could you? Get inside and bring that man with you. I've got words for the both of you. Daddy! Quiet! Mrs. Sato, I'm really sorry for the trouble my daughter has caused you. I'll make sure that she gets back to you about the compensation. Like that, Rika and Yuji ended up having to take a lecture from Rika's father, and I received the compensation I demanded without any problems. It was a shame that it wasn't a lot. As for Kuga, it was decided that he would be brought up by his grandparents instead, and his mother was barred from having contact with him. I'd feel bad for him if he had to stay with a mother that wasn't interested in raising him properly. There's no knowing how he might turn out. It was just three days, but I feel like I've had enough drama for a lifetime. I think it's pretty amazing that it's all sorted out in such a short time. You're right. I could probably use this as a storyline for my next script. Yeah, that's a great idea. Then you can cast me as the detective that investigates the affair. I'll think about it. <laughs> Just two years later, the drama based on my new script was a big hit. I guess that means that I've got one thing to thank Yuji and Rika for.